morning, good afternoon, good evening to you wherever you are. And um, welcome and thank you for joining our talk today about the OVAS uh, mobile security testing guide. So you already know us now, um, myself, Sven and Carlos. So we are both the project leads of the OVAS um, MSDG project. And we would like to give you today um, a short update about the project. It will not be a very technical one, and just about the project itself and what we are thinking about it and the future of the project and how we want to shape it. But before we are starting with that, I want to give you a very brief introduction about the MASVS and also the MSDG so that we're all on the same page. So the MASVS or Mobile AppSec Verification Standard um, is a document that um, is summarizing roughly, I think 80 different, 80 different security requirements that are specifically defined for mobile app security. So in that sense, you can say the um, MASVS is complementing also the OWASP ASVS project because the ASVS is more for server side where the MASVS is really only for the mobile app itself. So the document is really aimed for giving um, guidance to developers and also penetration testers. And our goal was also um, when we were starting the project in 2016 to establish an industry standard for mobile security. And this mission was also achieved because the MASVS is referenced um, in this um, in various mobile app payment standards in Europe and also in other countries. Um, the document itself lives in GitHub. So we have a repo, the whole document is being written in Markdown and you can read it also all the time in Gitbook because we changed, changed everything to Gitbook. So meaning every change in GitHub will also be reflected in, in Gitbook. That's about the MASVS. The MSDG on the other side is now a much more comprehensive manual for mobile app security testing and even reverse engineering. So for all the different requirements that we have outlined in the um, MASVS, there are different test cases. Always one requirement in the MASVS will have one test case for iOS and one test case for Android. And this is then describing really in great detail the technical processes that a penetration tester um, would need to follow in order to verify the requirement. And it also outlines the um, best practices that should be um, followed by a developer to implement the best practice and to mitigate um, different kinds of uh, vulnerabilities in mobile apps. Okay, so let's come to a few of the issues that we could see um, or are aware of as part of the MESVS project. So the first thing that we was quite tedious in the past, to be honest, was to create the document. So when we were doing a release, this was a very um, tedious manual uh, process, to be honest. And therefore, already last year, um, we started a new initiative in order to create a complete and improved document generation pipeline. So we were shifting now completely to GitHub Action. And um, this was now a really great team effort, effort um, from uh, everybody in, involved in this. And the outcome is really remarkable because we are able now to generate all the um, different MESVS documents, including all the translations. We have in total, I think 12 or 13 different and translations also, and everything is being um, generated on the fly in less than um, two minutes now. So this is really significant um, improvement for us because this allows us actually to um, to have more time for, for other things for the MASVS and MSDG. Two other items I would like to point out is um, the checklists that we are maintaining. So we have a checklist, which is an Excel checklist that is mapping the MASVS requirements to the MSDG test cases. So this is a quite nice overview and gives um, developers, but also um, auditors or penetration testers a really nice overview and to ensure consistency when you're also testing the security of mobile apps. The other thing is um, that we are working on is a lack of consistency. So the lack of consistency means that we have requirements in the MASVS that might be redundant. For example, we have a section about authentication. The thing is authentication is happening on the server side and this is already covered um, in the ASVS standard. So this might be something that is redundant and that we also might want to remove in the future, for example. And there are many other examples where 
some controls might be too broad or where we might want to merge requirements or even might get rid of the requirements. And this is also work in progress at the moment from our end. So let's go to the checklist generation um, to these two items, the checklist generation and also um, the refactoring for the MASVS in a bit more detail. So for the checklist generation, as I was saying, it's an Excel format. And the problem that we are facing with this is that it's usually out of date because it's maintained manually, which is of course far from ideal. We already have now this quite nice documentation pipeline where everything is happening in GitHub Action. And the plan is now to have um, another Python script that is getting the data um, that we need for the Excel checklist out of the MSTG markdown files and out of the MASVS markdown files. And this will then be merged into a machine readable format in an intermediate YAML file. So then we have all the information that we need in a quite nice format, it's machine readable, meaning it could even be utilized by other projects, like for example, the OVAS SKF, the security knowledge framework. And um, of course, if you have everything machine readable, then we might even be able to say that we have full MAS, MASVS coverage or maybe some test cases are missing. So obviously, if you have these kind of machine readable data, then you can do um, much, much easier um, further automation around it. And this whole initiative that we are doing at the moment should be going into a checklist that is created automatically through and which will also allow us to have less maintenance for it. Ideally, this is just being triggered when we are creating a new release. And then the um, checklist is being created automatically in all the various languages also that we have available. The other part was about the MASVS and the refactoring. So you can see here a screenshot of the Miro board that we are um, working on at the moment and um, this huge mind map that we already have. So I was already saying it that we have a lot of requirements that might be redundant, redundant or that are simply might need to be removed. So we are going now through every different domain in the MASVS and also every different requirement and really want to understand if this is the right requirement, if we need to merge something or move it around or maybe just need to reword it. So this is of course, um, and, um, and a lengthy process, but we want to be very transparent also about it. So what we are doing at the moment is that we keep everything um, publicly that we have um, that we have worked on, meaning you can go into the GitHub discussions of the um, MASVS um, GitHub repo. And the latest discussion is, for example, regarding the network requirements. So you can see then the old requirements, our new proposed requirements in terms of the rewording and what has actually changed. And uh, we would be very happy if you can give us some feedback also around it so that we can really shape everything into the right manner. Because only if we have the MASVS in the right way, then we will be able then to create also the um, updated test cases around it. So this is really the groundwork um, that we're doing now to refactor the whole MASVS to achieve then um, a version 2.0. Okay, then this was from my end around the MASVS. Then over to you, Carlos, for the MSTG. Yeah, thank you. So here, um, let's see about the issues we've identified for the MSTG. I will just go quickly through all of them because we have some other slides with more details. And if anything remains open, you can just ask us on the Q&A. So uh, the first one is very similar as uh, with the MESPS. Uh, we were spending a lot of time, uh, very valuable time on the document generation, but now the automation takes care of that. And we are also using uh, almost the same pipeline, just a bit modified for the for the MSDG. Then um, we have uh, the second, the lack of usability for testing. So uh, we were thinking about how to make the guide more, more than a static document so that, um, that we can make it functional, usable by other tools, people, etc. So Sven was already talking about the machine readable documents, etc. So it goes in this, in this sense. So um, on one side, we thought about uh, introducing some rules for static and dynamic analysis that I will explain on the next slide, and then um, enabling this third-party tool access, as Sven also uh, introduced. 
Um, the third point uh, is again lack of consistency and sync uh, synchronization with the MESVS. So sometimes we have a test case covering more than one MESVS uh, ID. Um, so we try to think about what can we do here. And uh, one solution is we decided we will just go now from having instead of chapters, so one file per one, uh, one file per test case equals one MESVS ID. And then um, other things about uh, consolidating information, like only having information about tools in the tools chapter, which makes sense. Uh, general chapters should only explain things about Android iOS and the testing chapter should only test because now it's uh, a bit mixed. Uh, we have a lot of explanations in the testing chapters as well. And um, also we go uh, to a different audience. It was not that different, but we were having as an audience so developers and pen testers. Mm -hmm. And of course, we keep the developers. Uh, they are welcome here, but uh, we will focus on the uh, pen testers because it's a testing guide, it's not a development guide. So that for that, I will uh, talk about later again about this point in a slide. And then the, um, the fourth one, uh, we'd like to improve the maintainability. So um, as you all know, maintaining is a pain. It doesn't matter which project, uh, it's documentation here or code or whatever. So um, we noticed that we have a lot of um, redundant information or information that you can actually find online. And uh, we want to kind of ensure that we are always up to date. So maybe, uh, so one of the solutions is to remove things and link to original sources and then try to uh, go with that. So uh, now let's see more about two and three. So for this rules that I've mentioned, so uh, this is just an idea, but might actually work. We will see about this. Um, if you're familiar with our testing techniques, you will uh, know that we have some static and some dynamic analysis um, techniques. So in the end, we are almost um, always doing the same. Like on one side is static, we're searching, grabbing for things, for a string or something. And on the dynamic part, we are tracing some function or hooking this function. Uh, so we thought, okay, maybe... Uh, we can standardize this and we decide for static analysis to use grep or sem grep for code and for uh, dynamic analysis, we always use freedom. So actually we could write rules in some specific way that is nice to read and it's also nice to parse and some other tools can use this and it's even usable for automation, doing smoke tests uh, from a pipeline, etc. So we will come up with something, present it, test it, and let's see what happens. So next one. Um, so this is the new architecture I was talking about. So we try to um, make clear that everything originates on the MESVS. And as I said before, we have one, we will have one file per uh, MASVS ID, including one test case, which is verifying that ID and uh, has always the same structure like overview, static analysis, dynamic analysis. And um, then we go to the test cases, making use of the testing techniques, uh, which will be properly referenced by links, for instance. And these techniques base or are uh, supported by the testing fundamentals. If you look at our current outlines on the MASTG, you will see that uh, testing fundamentals is called now basic security testing and um, testing techniques are actually called reverse engineering and tampering. So we wanted to make this a bit more um, generic, more so abstracted a little bit so that this is clear what's in there and we can properly link uh, things. So, and uh, the last step is of course, testing techniques um, 
uh, use tools from the tools chapter. And this will be also properly uh, referenced. So in the end, uh, there will be a set of scripts that um, are triggered by our pipeline and will do different things. As was already mentioned, the security knowledge framework will get some structured information from us. We will generate the Excel uh, checklists automatically for all the languages. Uh, statistics about coverage and usage of tools, etc. The static and, anal and dynamic analysis rules, which will live in the document and will be parsed, extracted. And of course, our documents like our PDF. And yeah, so that's it. Let's see how it works. And we have one more thing, um, kind of, uh, uh, a big, big thing. We have a lot of changes and um, pretty radical as <laughs> we write here. So we were changing a lot over these years, restructuring a lot, and we have um, a lot of things that we can, uh, we, we would, would like to do from now on as we are presenting here. And um, this, we thought, deserves something big. So we took this, we styled in the, the essence of these changes and tried to make a brand new design. So we took our current covers and turned them into something new, which is this. And um, so we will be introducing this, uh, don't know yet um, when exactly, but in the next uh, months probably, along with the new changes. And um, this should highlight uh, several things. So the first one um, that our two documents are part of the same entity. The design uh, is keep, uh, is kept clean and simple, consistent, and we um, uh, it reflects all of our changes. It also expresses that um, we are now more structured and even more functional as before, as we were explaining, uh, allowing this, this external access and tool access, etc. And we also wanted to reflect the um, uh, complementarity because both uh, documents um, deal with Android and iOS, even if the MASVS is OS agnostic, but yeah, kind of reflecting uh, what we did for uh, the FG also for Android and iOS, and also should be reflected in this uh, cover redesigned that uh, we really hope that you also like uh, as much as we do. <laughs> and yeah, so. That was it from my side. Uh, any feedback, uh, please uh, reach out on the Q&A and uh, also uh, anytime by email, Slack, on GitHub, on our discussions. Uh, if you want to participate in the project, uh, please anytime, just let us know and we can get you started. Uh, we have uh, in our GitHub already how to do that, but in any case, you can just contact us and we will gladly help you. So yeah, thanks a lot from my side and uh, have a great day and fun with the rest of the conference. <laughs>